Welcome back, this time for the first of the Masterclass series. In this session of Masterclass, we are going to understand a bit more about the ATM integration with core banking. So this is the first session of the Masterclass on ATM integrations. So let's understand how does this integration work. Let's assume the ATM, which is owned by a bank, the bank has running a code banking database. So let's assume the bank to be City. Citibank has its own ATM. It issues its own card to its customer, and the customer walks to the ATM of City. So when the customer inserts his card to the ATM, the transaction gets routed to the core banking database, but not directly. So there is an intermediary called a switching software. This switching software is within the bank's data center. This switching, cent this switching software interacts with the bank's core banking database to pass the accounting entries to debit or credit the customer based on the transaction. Now this is known as an on us transaction because it is city's card using city's ATM. So this ATM also belongs to city. So this honors transaction is routed from the ATM to the switch using some proprietary language, which we're not interested with. What we are more interested with is how does the switch software connect to the CBS or the core banking software? This is through a protocol known as the ISO standard. It's known as ISO 8583. So ISO 8583 is the protocol by which the switch integrates with the CBS. So let's understand a bit more on this ISO protocol. So to enlarge this, this is the switching software interacting with the core banking database. So this is the ISO 8583 protocol. So what exactly is this protocol? Now, imagine the message transfer is through a series of strings of alphabets or numbers. So this is transmitted over the wire using the TCP IP protocol. So we all know that for internet applications, we use the HTTP protocol, but when it comes to a switching software interacting with the database, it's TCP IP protocol, which is much layer on the transport layer. So the switch sends a series of messages over the wire in TCP IP protocol to the core banking database. So obviously what is the content of this is through with the ATM transaction. So if it's a cash withdrawal, the series of messages will have something or the details related to the ATM transaction. So let's understand what this message means. So the message would look something like this. So this is the series of messages which comes. So this is for one transaction. If the ATM does another transaction, it will be followed by maybe another message string. So on. So it's a series of messages. Maybe this is for message one and this is for message two. Message one is for transaction one and message two is for transaction two. So Obviously, the question arises, how will the core banking software know that this is transaction one, which is transaction two, because there is no message separator between these two. So we will answer that a little while, we'll park that. So what is important to understand is that these series of messages are transmitted to TCP IP and then moved to the database. So the core banking software provides an intermediary layer, a, a, a messaging service, which will read this message and then appropriately 
move it to the database, which could be in Oracle or MS SQL, NoSQL, and so on. So they will have this piece of intermediary software, which will read this string of messages, try to demarcate between the two messages, and then send it to the database in an understandable form so that the database will be able to process the message and pass the appropriate accounting entry. Now the question arises is that how is this message between these two understood by the, the, the software which is in front of the database? So let's dwell more in that. So let's take an example, one, two, three, there was some cryptic characters. Then we will have, let's say, the trans zero one, then 500, then one, two, three, four, then we'll have five, six, seven, eight, and so on. So this is the string of messages which is passed from the switching software to the core banking database. So each of these has some meaning. So probably this has a meaning. This, which is in a binary, has a meaning. This has a meaning. This probably is the amount, which is stands for something else. This probably is the terminal ID. This is probably the card number and so on. So as part of the ISO 8583 protocol, each of the bits in the message has a particular significance. So this is field one, this is field two, this is field three, this is field four, this is field five, and so on. We will have 128 fields. So we will get into the details of each of these 128 fields. Of course, the question arises, how do I know what's the length of the first field? How is the first field and the second field different? And so on. So that's where the ISO 8583 protocol comes into play because the protocol actually tells you what each field stands for, what is significance, what's the length, whether it's alphabet or numeric, whether it's optional or mandatory. So that's where the protocol comes into play. We'll understand more about the protocol in the next session, but for now it should suffice that between the switching software and the core banking database, there is a series of messages which goes one message for each transaction. The message is can be constructed into a series of elements um, we call it as fields, and each of these fields has a particular significance. To understand the significance, we have to go through the ISO 5583 protocol. So this, in short, explains how the integration between the core banking uh, and the switching software is. So in the next session, let's try to understand more about the ISO 8583 protocol. But first, we talked about an honors transaction. Now, this is the ATM, this is the switching software, and this is the core banking database of Citi. Now, if the Citi customer goes to a Citi ATM, obviously this will become an honors transaction. This is known as an honors transaction. Now, what if the same Citi customer walks into an HSBC ATM because that's nearer to his house, what will it happen? Now, HSBC obviously will have its own switching software and have its own database. This is HSBC's data center and this is Citi's data center. So when the Citi customer walks into the HSBC ATM, the transaction gets routing to the switch of HSBC. Now, HSBC switch understand that this card is not issued by me. It's not issued by HSBC, it's issued by Citi. So probably it's a Visa card. So the switching software sends it to the Visa gateway. Let's talk, let's I mean, assume it's a Visa. So it goes to the Visa gateway and Visa gateway understands that this is card number is issued by Citi. Visa will direct it to the Citibank's switch. So Citi receives it as a remote honors transaction. Now this transaction also goes to the HSBC database because in HSBC, I need to account for the cash which has gone out of my ATM. So that's known as an offers transaction. So a transaction which is offers for HSBC is actually a remote on us for city. So the remote on us is my card, their ATM, whereas an offers is their card and my ATM. So that's the difference between honors remote on us and offers. 
So that's all we have time for in this first session of the masterclass on ATM. In the next series, we are going to see more about the ISO 8583 protocol, understand what the various fields or the tags in a message stand for. Thank you so far being with us. Thank you.